Bonsoir. Soyez le bienvenu. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Dean Sarah Whiting. Um, I want to begin by acknowledging that Harvard University and the Graduate School of Design is located on the traditional and ancestral land of the Massachusetts people, who were the original inhabitants of what's now known as Boston and Cambridge. We pay respect to the Massachusetts tribe, past, present, and future, and we honor the land itself, which remains sacred to the Massachusetts people. The school also recognizes the work of the Harvard University Native American program in cultivating the relationships that led to the creation of this acknowledgement. And a quick reminder, we have live captioning available tonight for our virtual audience, albeit only in English. Um, to enable captions, click the closed captioning button at the bottom of the live stream window. We also have, oh, we do, wow. We have captioning in French available for our French-speaking audience. Unbelievable what, what we can do here. A link will be provided in the live screen uh, Q&A window. I also want to invite you all to join tomorrow afternoon in Stubbins, which is room 112, for the second event that celebrates the 14th Veronica Rudge Green Prize in Urban Design, and that's a series of workshops that will reinterpret the Grand Paris Express from North American perspectives. The first workshop, High Performance Public Transportation, will begin at 12.30. And the second workshop, Beyond a Subway, Multiple Dimensions of New Stations as Urban Projects, will begin at 3. And now for tonight's event. Professor in practice, Joan Busquets, who chaired the jury for this, green, this year's Green Prize, will give a formal introduction to tonight's exhibit, I mean, tonight's event. But let me take just a few moments to share um, uh, just some of my reactions. So even though we've had the exhibition in the Drucker Gallery now for several weeks, I continue to be surprised and honestly humbled by the extraordinary feat that is represented by Grand Paris Express. Make no little plans, Daniel Burnham urged the world well over 100 years ago. But most big thinking that happens at the urban scale tends to transform large swaths, large single swaths of fallow urban land into gleaming new urban sectors of offices and housing and most oftentimes in so doing results in wholesale urban gentrification. Grand Paris Express is not one single site. It's 68 new metro stations connect via 120 miles of new tracks, 134 communities. The process that, under, uh, that this project undertook is as critical as the project. As you'll see from the exhibition as, and as you'll hear this evening and tomorrow, it involved constituencies from every one of these communities. This ensemble of new metro stations deploys art, public events, and most importantly, design to create entirely new definition of the greater metropolitan area of Paris. If Boston has the emerald necklace, Grand Paris Express is a transportation necklace each bead transforming its particular urban site while connecting to all the others. It's a model for us and for the rest of the world, and I'm so very grateful to the whole team that has come here from Paris so that we can learn directly from it. Merci bien. And now let me welcome to the podium Joan Busquets, who's our Martin Buxbaum Professor in Practice of Urban Planning and Design. Thank you, Joan. Thank you, Sarah. <clears throat> the distinguished uh, jury committee comprised Yves Blau, Maurice Cox, Kerry Hildebrand, and Ron Witter. With the support of Megan Ottaviani, the jury studied 108 urban design projects across the globe that they were submitted by generous nominators. After evaluating projects of many different scales and ambitions, we recognize Grand Paris Express for its exceptional design quality, implementing a new archetype for urban design. The jury was particularly impressed by the impact of the reconfiguration of Paris 
through radical and comprehensive mobility infrastructure. The jury committee is excited to add Grand Prix Express to the list as the 14 Veronica Roach Green Prize in Urban Design, that is the foremost award recognizing achievement in this field. There are many other cities that have been selected before, Tokyo, New York, Medellin, Seoul, Barcelona, Aleppo, Seattle. The prize was established in 1986 to commemorate Harvard University's 30th anniversary and the 50th anniversary of the Harvard Graduate School of Design. I would like to acknowledge the late Michael von Klim for his generosity in funding the prize, and I'm extremely honored to have his family here this evening. I would also like to thank Professor Peter Rowe and Professor Gerald McHugh for their work initiating the, the prize at the GSD. I would like now to draw your attention about a few important issues that the Grand Paris Express project is addressing about sustainability and the design of the city today. That you can see on the exhibit outside. And also, you can share these issues in the discussion on the workshop that tomorrow afternoon is going to happen, open to the, the GSD member and visitors. First issue, the project prioritizes the investment on efficient, massive public transportation, instead of insisting on specialized roads in our congested cities, like many places happen today. Building 200 kilometers of tunnel and 68 stations means a clear switch in this priority. Is this perhaps the correct threshold that large cities need to trespass? Second question. The project established a new concept in the articulation of public transportation by linking key spots in the outskirts of Paris without crossing the downtown. This proposal is changing the way that Megalopolis has been tracing public transportation schemes along the 20th century, where they usually they were quite centripetal, going through the center. Is this non-centripetal special model a strategy for other megalopolis to consider? Third discussion. The Grand Paris Express project shows the way that you can make top-down decisions to define a very efficient infrastructure, but at the same time to ensure a well-balanced governance, considering a state, council, and municipalities. All decisions about the stations and their context must be discussed in this Parisian project with the municipal level, meaning bottom-up scheme process, engaging more than 100 of them, uh, like our team was mentioning before. Is this a new form of governance and development for urban design projects? To ensure the coherency between, among many stations, a clear briefing being defined for the station itself, but also for the surrounding urban spaces and connections to the existing urban fabrics. Is that very clear in the project, as we can see in the exhibit? Similarly, the large-scale research has been done on the ecological issues for improving vegetation, enhancing natural systems, as well as low-carbon materials to be used in the construction process, showing a large range of diverse, diverse solutions. Is this a new method to develop complex and innovative urban projects? In summary, this big project can be seen as an urban design paradigm exploring multiple scales on its decisions and searching innovation on its construction process. The bigness, the dimension, 
of this initiative, the way it is administered the, its governance, its well-calibrated design process, all that can be a good reference for big projects, perhaps in South Asia, in America, or elsewhere. In the end, befitting an urban design prize to the Société de Grand Paris and its associated teams, some of them represented here in our Piper Room, we are awarding because of the design excellence and because of its commitment to experimentation, realized through a process of negotiation between city officials, motivated designers, and mobilized citizens. All that sets a new standard for evaluation, innovation in the field of urban design. We can say perhaps the GPE project shows how urban design is adapted to a changing world. On behalf of the Graduate School of Design and Harvard University, we are awarding the Grand Prix Express projects, the Veronica Ruch Green Prize 2023. Please be so kind, join me in celebrating the award with them. Dear Sarah, dear Joanne, dear everybody. First, I understand that my whole speech will be transcribed here, even with my English mistakes. <laughs> That's the second reason why I have to warn you that I'm not sure I will be able to go to the end of this speech. The first reason some of my close friends here know that already is that this moment is very emotional. You know, a few weeks before, we received a call from Joanne telling us we won the prize. I think it was Pierre Emmanuel who told us during a directory meeting executive meeting, the board. Happened a moment I won't describe because I want that you keep an image of dignity of the Société du Grand Paris. But after that, that was pride. And the day after, when I told my three kids that I was going to deliver a speech here in Harvard, for the first time, I saw in their eyes that they were going to admire their father. <laughs> For another reason than my ability to build Legos. <laughs> I must precise that among my three children, no more children, any, actually, one studied urban planning. But however, the three are wonderful. <laughs> That's also the reason why I praised my wife to be there, and thank you, Isabel, to share this moment with me. <laughs> but I come back to my speech. The best way to go to the end is to make it short. Thank you. <laughs> Not so short, though. Good, good speech. <laughs> Among the countless reasons to thank you, I chose three of them. The first, thank you to have understood us so well. You know, the project of the Grand Paris Express is very long, born very long ago. But the, for, the first 
important moment was a law in 2010. The first article is Le Grand Paris est un projet urbain. The Grand Paris is an urban project. Sometimes we forget it when doing the project, when building the tunnels and so on. You just reminded us that it is an urban project based on a transportation network. And what you said about this project, I must say what I saw in this exhibition, I'm afraid to say that perhaps you understood it better than we. Second thing, you permit us to share what I feel like a community of people who deal with urban matters and who know that there are no solutions, that there are only mistakes, tries, and above all, trying to do the best to improve people's life. That's also very important. The third thanks is the fact also that you are going to help us to face our fear, our fright, our scare, sorry, I forgot the term, our scare, in front of this huge project. Sometimes I feel us like a troop of dwarfs trying to climb a mountain. But now we hear a loud voice, which is yours, saying, guys, move on. You are perhaps in the good direction. Thank you for that. You know, we won't forget it. And it, this will be in our mind every day. To conclude, I would like to dedicate this prize to three categories of people. The first one, Karim knows that, is probably the most important. To the people of Ile-de-France, for whom we are doing that. The second dedication is to the teams of the Société du Grand Paris. My dear Bernard, Sandrine, Julien, Pierre-Emmanuel, Nicolas, thank you to be there. And with you, I want to share that with all the teams of the Société du Grand Paris. The third one, the third one is not sad, but I must say that I would like to dedicate a small part of this prize to Wayne Shorter. Perhaps you know this jazz legend passed away today. It's a very important part of my American culture. I am, I must say, a bit sad when I hear his music and when I think of the numerous times when I tried to play it. You know, he was also a very important composer and among his compositions, there is one very beautiful, which is called Footprints. And I just make a vow that the footprint, urban footprint, of the Grand Paris Express is so beautiful, as beautiful, as the one of Wayne Shorters. Thank you. Thank you, Jean-François. So, yeah, my name is Karim Bouamran. So, I actually, the, the, I think, one of the last black politicians left-handed who were there 10 years ago, he becomes president. So, I hope it will be a good sign for me. <laughs> so, um, first and foremost, uh, Mr. Dean Whiting, dear Mr. Juan Busquets, honorable member of the juries, Mr. Consul, Mr. Chairman of the Board of Directors, dear architect, dear students, ladies and gentlemen, um, good evening. It's a real honor for us to stand you before you today to accept this award on behalf of the Société du Grand Paris and to represent the countless individuals who have dedicated their time, their energy, their expertise to the Grand Paris Express project. So, um, Big, big, big dédicace, as we say in France, to Jean-François Montiel, uh, Bernard Catlin, uh, Sandrine Gourlet, 
Julien Perron, Nicolas Merle, Pierre-Emmanuel Becheron, PE number one, euh, Rémi Babinet, Juliette de Charmet, Isabelle Montels, and of course all the architects who are belong to the delegation, um, special thanks to um, Dominique Perrault, um, Pauline Marchetti, Jacques Ferrier, uh, Dominique Alba, and Pierre Alain Trevelot. Big applause for them because they make an outstanding job. Thank you very much. Big job. Thank you. Uh, really, this team is amazing. Honestly, it's like uh, your students um, and your professor, uh, dear Sarah, uh, have been really impressed by the quality of their work, the spirit, the humility, and what we are doing in France. Thanks to these guys, thanks to this team, it's just outstanding, amazing, and terrific. And as I used to say, every day they make life better for all, all, all a new generation. Um, yeah, it's. Um, a big privilege to receive this award. As far as I am concerned, I've, I have always admired Arva's commitments to academic excellence, as well as the brilliant professors who have contributed so much to, to their respective fields of studies. The work done here had a significant impact on the world and continued to do so. I hope that how visit will uh, I hope how, how visit here will strengthen the ties between our two countries and we can continue to work together to advance the knowledge and discoveries that are so vital to our futures. The Grand Paris Express is groundbreaking transportation and urban development project that will transform the face of the Paris region, promoting soft mobilities, beautifying, beautifying public space, and creating territorial continuities. Through the joint work of architects and artists, we are turning deserted area into living areas served by a subway station, bringing people who are far from decision-making cycles closer to public services and employment. We are designing a public transportation red, but also we are thinking the futures. The future city with pedestrian and soft mobility facilities with vegetation, with beauty and dignity for everyone. That's the real cultural revolution. That's the philosophy of the Grand Paris. Hope, share progress, and innovation grow. And that's the philosophy of Harvard. They are the breeding ground of a more ethical, more sustainable, and more compassionate generation we are giving this generation a way to connect with its futures. Connect, grow, and flourish thanks to the Grand Paris. The Grand Paris Express is our opportunity to accelerate this ongoing phenomenon. Transport makes the territories, and it has always been that way. The historical dimension of this project cannot be overstated. From the end of the octroir barrier to the Osman Works, Paris has always been a city of progress, city of hope, that has never been afraid to take bold steps forward. And the Grand Paris Express is the next step directly linked to that proud tradition. This project represents the present. This project represents the future for all the next generation, for our generation, creating a more sustainable, a more livable, and more connecting world, a more connecting city. It's about opening up new opportunities for people who have been marginalized for too long times. It's about creating a continuum in the urban space by changing the paradigm of how we look at the territorial issues. At the Société du Grand Paris, we are proud to say that this project has a strong ecological impact and we are committed to, mitig to mitigating that impact to the greatest possible extent. But also understand that the benefits of this project are far-reaching and long-lasting. We are creating a transport network whose dimension is equivalent to what already exists in Paris and all over the world. We are doing it in a way that promotes beauty, sustainability, 
and communities. So today, we receive this award with great humility and gratitude on behalf of all who have worked to bring the Grand Paris Express to, to fruition. And we receive it with a sense of pride and optimism, knowing that this project will not only transform the suburb of the Paris region where we come from, but we also serve as a model for sustainable, equitable, equitable urban development around, the, around, around France and, I hope, around the world. Dear French, vive la République, vive la France, vive Harvard, and vive les USA, the USA. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now we will give the floor to architect Dominique Perrault that he is going to introduce um, an idea about his own project into the Grand Prix Express, but also representing the ideas that there are so many stations that we mentioned before that they are following the, this diversity that probably he is going to explain. And yeah, please, Dominique, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. And thank you, Johan, and thank you for the member of the jury. It was a pleasure to meet you uh, in Paris a few months ago. And, uh, and today is a, is a great honor, a great privilege for me to, to be a, a representative about the army. This army is huge because you have a 68 station, and you could imagine 68 architecture studios working about project. And you imagine 68 artist studios working about the project. You could imagine designers, graphists, and landscapers, they are coming because at, the, at this moment, only mushroom working with the tunnel, but in the future, some districts appear around this different new point in uh, this new territory. I am speaking about that in a few minutes. I would like to say, uh, uh, thank you. I would like to say some uh, some word about uh, this fantastic. Uh, the quality and quantity of talents working about this project. And this evening, we have some representatives and uh, with uh, Pauline Marchetti and Jacques Ferrier, they are working at the beginning of, uh, on this project about the feeling, feeling guidelines, and if you want, the emotional dimension to design the project because this project is not only some fantastic machine digging some tunnels, it's also a project where the people uh, meet some uh, some place, some space, some uh, some uh, new 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 quality and new status, if you want, about uh, this metropole. Also, uh, I would like to 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 say uh, about uh, Pierre Alain Trevelo, Pierre Alain Trevelo, working about the quality of the public space uh, in the in this. Uh, Station and uh, this uh, it develop uh, uh, some reflection about that, and also Dominique Alba. Dominique Alba was uh, the executive director of uh, Apur Atelier Parisien d'Urbanisme, and uh, she is uh, with us uh, this evening. And, uh, and uh, the the question is how, from a station, we could develop a new district uh, for Paris. And uh, I would like to finish. Sorry, because I. You are right, one. Thank you. And uh, but I would like to say just two words about this uh, this map. In fact, uh, uh, the development of the, the city of Paris is uh, uh, like an onion, if you want. A lot of belt during different during uh, centuries, and uh, and now we continue to develop this kind of figure and circular figure. Uh, to create the Grand Paris. 
and uh, finally a new metropole. Because the question today is uh, not to speak about Paris, but is uh, to speaking about Paris, include in a huge metropole, 12 million inhabitants at this moment, and obviously in uh, the future years, this metropole is growing. And uh, another point is uh, to, to create with this kind of uh, situation, very special situation, we would like to create another kind of relationship between the world above the soil, the in superstructure, and the world underneath the soil. And I think these two worlds now should speak together, should work together. This kind of uh, uh, attitude and the situation to be uh, uh, the superstructure in your, the, the infrastructure is finished because the planet is finished. Our world is finished. And we should think about some new place for some resource, and the resource come from the underground situation. And this image is just to explain how we could imagine a station like uh, the Pantheon of Rome, with uh, just a hole for the natural light and a big space underground to, to manage the, a lot, a lot of movement for, with the people uh, going into the train, out to the train, and so. And in this image also, you have a relationship between the Pantheon and a, a huge hospital working about the concert. And the concert, is, uh, this, uh, is, uh, the, this, uh, this plan is uh, about the research, about the cancer. And it's more or less like a cathedral. And the location of this, this new station, Villejuif, and this new station is at the bottom of the hospital. And the idea is how we could introduce the natural light deeply, because this uh, station, uh, the bottom of the station is at uh, 50 meters. Uh, minus 50 meters. And uh, we imagine like a small structure, like a, a market in a, in, a, in a district. It's not very exceptional. It's very usual. It's very the daily, more or less, uh, building. And but after you go into this uh, structure and you could see the railway station. And the idea of this railway station is uh, to, to, to go down in your metro, to take your metro, but without gallery, no tunnel, no dark, play, no, no dark places. And uh, when you go out from your metro, you could see the sky if you see above. And uh, this idea is to extend, to increase, to, to create a, a, a continuity between the world above and the, the world underneath. And in fact, also, we use a fantastic powerful of the engineering. Because this project is an infrastructure project, is a project designed and thinking by engineers. And is a very strong power with a lot of money, with a lot of intelligence about the technical development. And I think the architecture should grasp this kind of situation, this kind of component, and to transform the infrastructure in architecture. And that is the goal. That is, for me, the most important challenge how we could manage the new relationship between infrastructure and architecture. And uh, this project is may maybe a little bit more symbolic about that, because finally, we design only a cylinder. And after, all appear. From this cylinder, a very pure shape, the very minimal materi matter, we could material we use, and from this cylinder, like the, the skin of a, uh, of a tree, we develop a project, and the space inside, in the center, is a void. In this void, like uh, you know, the people are moving, and finally, the people 
work in the city and work to take the public transportation and share some this kind of moment, like if they are walking in, in the street. And I think it's for me the most important thing. Finally, at the end, art, because in each station you have a piece of art you, with architect, with landscaper, with everybody working about this project. We are creating a new social aesthetic about the transportation. It is our dream and uh, we hope in a few years, two, three, four, five years, you could visit some first uh, line working in the Grand Paris, in the, this uh, new metropole, very important metropole, the most important metropole in Europe. And thank you for the price. Thank you uh, to help us to push and develop our dream. Now we will no, no. go. Good. Now we will um, start a round table that we invite also um, Dominique Perrault, Professor uh, Yves Blau from from the, the school, and, and Megan uh, Octaviani, MAUD uh, student, and then um, San Francisco Montales. That's going to be a conversation about the, about the project in a way that other things um, that probably will appear in this uh, debate. Hello. Hello, thank you everyone for being here. I'll start this mini session by introducing myself. So my name is Megan Octaviani. I am a second year Master of Urban Design student here at GSD. And I've been following along the project since the very beginning, which is last year. We started uh, with the jury and we continue with it exhibition that you can see outside. So to just to start this mini session, we have introduced everyone here except Professor Yves Law. So Professor Yves Law is currently, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Professor Yves Blois is currently a professor of history and theory of urban form and design at the GSD. And her research focuses on the complex dynamics of urban transformation. And she is also one of the jury member of the Fernie Fikala Green Prize. And yeah, just to, get that, just to get us started, how do you feel about Dominic's presentation? Is there anything that strikes you off or is there anything that interests you the most? Yes, I think, whoops. Hello? Yeah. <laughs> um, yes, I think that it's uh, very interesting for bringing in the architectural aspect and the design aspect uh, of this project, which is integral to it. And I think that that's one of the things that we recognize in this prize uh, by giving the prize as an urban design prize. So it's about uh, the urban, but it is very much about design and the role of architecture and uh, architectural spatial form in actually transforming uh, the city. And so I think that, that um, Dominique's uh, talk makes that very clear. And I think also the multiple levels uh, of the city too, that the infrastructure, the transportation infrastructure is, um, uh, connects the city on, the, uh, on multiple levels. And I think that that's one of the uh, main points, or very important points that you're making about the groundscape. And that we have to think about the city in three dimensions, not only above the ground, but also under um, the ground. Yes, and uh, uh, about uh, this, um, uh, I think this kind of uh, huge project, this could be a good excuse to develop an uh, 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 unknown map about the territory. Because we know the map about the soil, the map of street, park, I don't know, landscape, and so we know the map. We know very well the map, but underground we have no map. 
we have no map. And, uh, and I think uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great job we should do. Because uh, uh, with this kind of development, obviously the SGP, the Société du Grand Paris, develop its project. It is a mission. But on the side, what's happened? And I think this kind of uh, project is absolutely positive, important, about to the link between the, peop the people living there and working there. But also, it could be a good, a good excuse to introduce another feeling, another relationship, another knowledge, in fact, about our territory. And I would like to finish to, in, in, uh, uh, with the, this term of resilience. Because we have need, because it, it's, it's a metropole, it's clear. It's not a city now, it's finished. It, it will be a metropole, and a metropole should be careful about this kind of uh, subject, about this kind of uh, uh, difficulties in the future, and the resilience is a, not only sustainability, but the resilience is a real s subject to manage. We should manage this kind of situation through the resilience and this kind of network creating a resilience because this system installs definitively a link between the people and a link to, to preserve the relationship between the people. In fact, it's true that probably this idea that you are now describing, Dominique, is, is clear that in Paris, like in many other cities, what happens is that the this idea of the center gets a certain limit. Yeah. And the center cannot be extended continuously. And outside the center, there are things that they are very powerful. And the fact that you try to connect these things, like Saclay, or places that they are out of the city today, but if you put them into the network, it changes the form of the megalopolis. And I think this is probably what is so interesting in this project. And it's something that perhaps Jean-Francois, I don't know if that was in the intention or the way that the stations are, move, are changing in a way, eh? they are evolving in a way. Eh? That's because they are, I'm sure, stations that they have a lot of economic activity inside and others that they are very residential, others that they are going to be developed. No? I would like to start with something um, I don't think that we, we, we are forgetting, but which is also very important in the project. We spoke about maps, we spoke about design, architecture, we spoke also about engineers and doers, if I may say so. But in between, there is something very important, which is politics. A map is politic. And a project is politic. This one is a political project. So when you speak about the districts around the stations, or this, this transformation, we won't forget that it is politics. I'm pleased to say that in front of you, my dear Karim. <laughs> you know that better than I do. But we speak about that often. So the project is to make this transformation between what is thought, for example, here, in urban planning and in all these reflections, high reflections about what ought to be done. And what is going to be done in, in concrete. And the politics in that is, uh, I must say, something very interesting and sometimes beautiful. So I just wanted to add that, which is uh, in the difficult times we are all living, in Europe or in the United States, don't forget that politics can be a very important and beautiful thing. When we, when we think, for example, about what can be done in a district around the station. 
Thank you, Jean Francois. Um, I would like to continue about the notion of the city and the metropole. The 68 stations is actually not only covering the urban areas, but also the areas uh, around the Paris, which is called Banlieu or the outskirts of Paris. So the question is, actually in terms of scale, complexity, and the impact, the Grand Paris Express itself is way larger than what urban design used to deal with. It's way larger than what urban designers used to work with. So uh, the question is, what does the Grand Paris Express tell us about urban design? And does it change our conception about urban design as a field itself? Great, yeah. Um, it's a very interesting and, and complex question. Um, and something that I think we all gave a great deal of thought to on the jury uh, when we were considering this project. And I think that it's fair to say that um, in awarding the prize to the uh, Grand Paris Express, um, that we're recognizing qualities in that project that we've been talking about that are extraordinary, and the, the transformational impact of, uh, of that project, and that the prize recognizes that, and I think this is sort of my theme here, as values of urban design. And so I see the prize actually also being uh, a statement about urban design. And that in many ways, I think that this project, and by awarding the urban design prize to this project, that it recalibrates urban design itself. It, it kind of adjusts the, uh, the scale of it and how we understand urban design that it's not about design at a certain scale, at uh, the middle scale, um, but it's something, and actually in, in thinking about this, um, I'm a historian, so I went back to uh, think about and to look at how uh, urban design was originally conceived um, here at the GSD where urban design um, actually was one of the first programs, degree programs, in urban design and departments. And it was established by um, Jose Luis Sert, and he called it, interestingly, a bridge practice. Uh, a bridge practice between architecture, landscape architecture, engineering, and planning. Um, and by that, he didn't mean that it was a super practice but that this was a common ground within the professions. And I think that this is something that we're getting a very good sense of here about the Grand Paris uh, Express, that it's very much of a collaborative practice. And I think that that's, uh, we talked about, and you mentioned the, uh, the extensive team and all of the, the different parts, but I see it also in one of the, what we recognize really as urban design here is that it's this collaborative prog uh, project and practice. And that it's, um, and Sert also uh, called it this, that it's a way of thinking urbanistically. It's a synthetic way of thinking. Uh, it's a way of thinking across scales. Uh, it's a critical practice. And the other interesting thing about it is that it's research-based. And um, so I think that the, the, the project and the awards say something about urban design, but the urban design lens, I think, and this speaks to um, what Dominique was talking about too, it brings into focus the um, critical significance of these gar a plus, the stations and the public squares that are around them and, and the whole urban districts that are being built um, around the stations and that these are urban nodes um, and that they're, they're not just infrastructural, but they're sites of uh, urban transformation. And I see this as the, these are kind of the, the key components of this whole system that actually um, anchor it in the ground, uh, anchor it in place, and they also create these peripheral centers. Um, and sort of decentering Paris uh, in the process, and that it's that decentering and these peripheral centers, let's say, that are all around the 68 uh, new stations, that they are what really ensure um, the long-term uh, sustainability and, and resiliency um, that you've been talking about. 
And so I see the prize as um, giving us a great deal, actually, and helping us to reconceptualize urban design in terms of this project. So already, um, Harvard has learned a great deal from the Grand Paris Express. So thanks. Thank you so much, Eve. Dominic, anything to add on about the concept of the Garia Plus and the groundscape? <laughs> Putting you on the spot. <laughs> All right. In that case, I have one question for Jean Francois. We all know that this project is undoubtedly a very complicated and also very symbolic as well for Paris. Uh, what makes it possible in terms of governance or in terms of political or in terms of uh, discussion process or decision making process? What makes it actually possible? What are the critical aspects of it? <laughs> You're giving me that. Look. Perhaps, perhaps only one thing. Trust. Uh, I think that when you 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 start, I, I start my my job in Société Grand Paris two years ago, around two years ago, quite an anniversary. And when you see all this complexity, one guy of the executive board told me, for example. Uh, uh, we divided the, the network into six parts. Each one is around five to ten billion euros. And he told me once, uh, five billion euros is too much for one brain, which is true. But when you have the six, it's really too much for a lot of brains. But you, you can do that with trust, which permit cooperative action. You, 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 you just say that, and, and I, I'm sure it's completely true. It's impossible, impossible to have good decision alone. You know, our uh, managing, managing board, directory board, is three people. That's very important. We decide three together. And we discuss a lot. And we disagree sometimes. But we build the decision all together. So, there is no answer to your question, I'm afraid. It's a difficult question. But perhaps question. some ideas should be you only can build that, that on trust, which permit collaborative action. This has also to do with uh, politics and to this ambience, this system of trust you have to maintain all around the project to pursue it. Thank you. Uh, oh. Maybe I, I would like to speak uh, uh, um, uh, about the commitment, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, because um, sorry, Karim, because uh, you are there, but uh, uh, you are a perfect example uh, about the, com the commitment to 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 be involved and develop the project, and uh, and I think this. Uh, this notion, if you want, uh, for me, working with the, 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 the term of project. Because, in fact, it is a project, you know. It's, it's, it's not, a, it's not a, a, um, something, you know. It's a project. And, uh, and it's very important, because Jean-Francois said, it's a public money. The commitment of the government is very strong, should be. They have no choice. They are involved in this project. It's not easy, okay, but it's not easy for everybody in this project. But the commitment is very strong. The commitment uh, from the mayor is very strong. It's very important because when a station appears in, in your territory, the world change. Change. Definitely. And also, we should create also another kind of a, a commitment between uh, uh, creators, between about the design. And because uh, when you build along a street, you, you have an existing condition. You see the building inside, on the side. In this situation, you build a station, another one is very far, and I think Maybe we should think to, to develop 
a special soul and a special uh, uh, feeling between different between architect, artists, and so not only about one station, about different station, and uh, it's not to 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 develop a style. It's, it's not the question. The question is to to develop a project together, and I think uh, now. It's time to say that because at the beginning, okay, we should dig tunnel. You have a lot, a lot of money, technical problem, and so and a political problem because the metropole change also. And uh, but now I think we could create more or less a community, a community working about the project and support the project because it is a project. For me, uh, the term project is not a, is not a small term. And I appreciate when you say design. Design is, is something. Project is something. It's not a joke. And, um, and uh, we will see. We are speaking together. OK. Dominique, just the question is very interesting regarding what was the key of success. Key of success, I think we got three things. Of course, quality of the people. That's the first point. The second point, uh, quality of the technology second key of success, and of course, uh, uh, last but not least, uh, political determination. And today, just you have to understand that in the Parisian metropole, during year and year and years, you have a big centrum and the suburbs, and everything uh, was thinking based on the centrum. And now it's a new political paradigm. You have the suburbs and the same level as the centrum. And this is a real strong political level who gave us the opportunity to succeed this project and to go between a big gap between 2020 and 2030. So that's why the revolution will not be televised, the revolution will be live. <laughs> Thank you so much for the, for the awesome answers. Uh, I think this concludes our mini session, and I'm going to pass it over to Joanne. But before that, uh, Karim mentioned about technology, about policy, and about decision making. And we are going to cover that tomorrow in the workshop. So please be there. Uh, yeah. And then I'm going to pass it over to Joanne just to share a concluding remark. Thank you. No, no. Thank you. Thank you for reminding. I think the the discussion that we just started now tomorrow in the workshops and we invite you all to follow them because probably these elements, the fact some of the, the protagonists that they are here on the first uh, row, I think those are able to communicate us the experience of this project, which I think is very interesting for us also to see how a project like that at the same time is complex, but at the same time is clearly and has to fulfill certain process and certain dates. I mean, I think what, what you were saying when your project also, Dominique, is very clear to say, in the end, is an infrastructure project. And to make from the infrastructure project an urban project, I think it needs a lot of care. It needs to control a lot the process, the time, the way the decisions can be. Yeah. Today, when we are dealing about the sustainable issues, the question of the low carbon materials is essential. Because you cannot make a tunnel with wood, but we have to do the tunnel, in a way, and how we can do it, in a way. And I think those elements are going to be very interesting, and probably we can leave that for the session of tomorrow. Eh? We invite you to that. And now, I invite us all as a group to visit the exhibit and to take advantage that we have here this privileged first row with a lot of a person engaged in the design, in the management of, of this project, and then probably for us is a privilege to have them around and then to share in the next uh, half an hour or three quarters of an hour, moving around the exhibit and then sharing uh, this, this experience. Yeah? That's right. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much.